It's all your fault that our kids have autism. Do you believe this guy? Let's talk about this. Someone actually on the channel said that I had good parenting with the first three, and that's why they don't have autism. And then with the other two, my bad parenting caused their autism. And we deal with autism every day with our two kids who are autistic. Ezra is our seven-year-old. He laughs a lot and he is our happiest child. He has autism, apraxia, speech, and ADHD. And it's difficult for him to verbalize things, so he communicates through an iPad. Simon is our three-year-old who has autism as well. He loves cars and has a more mild autism. It's very natural to blame, right? To try and to place blame, but really that does no good for anyone. Like, we got to focus on the solution to the problem, helping our kids gain the most autonomy that they possibly can. And Holly even said that I at one point blamed her. I don't remember that, but... It was but, when we first found out about Ezra's autism. It was just, you know, this like shock at first, which I think is an, is a typical reaction. I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of. You go through this cycle as parents, you've got denial and then this kind of shock and then you realize this new normal um, and then you focus on things that you can control, you know, and things like that. So that that's my own interpretation of it, but... Don't be, so, don't be too hard on yourself. If you see things in the comments, and, and a lot of you who comment, we appreciate it. Um, but love love your opinions and stuff. And Yeah, if you see something that you totally disagree with, you can put in the comments and you can argue with respect. And, you know, you can leave out the four little wor words. You know, we can keep this a family-friendly channel for everyone. And just say, this is my opinion. I disagree with you. And I think that that type of conversation is very healthy. Now, um, we've been getting some comments on our channel that um, I think are very unhealthy, um, especially for the mother to, to hear, to hear or, or whatever. Or um, even consider to be true. Yeah. But that being said, it's not the mother's fault. It's not. <laughs> and he doesn't think so either. So we decided to go to a professional with these comments because of course we can respond and we definitely have responses and opinions on this, but we wanted to give you more than just our experience, right? We wanted to give you a professional opinion too. And so we went to Dr. Spenlove and he is a clinical psychologist and he really specializes in autism diagnosis in younger children. He was actually part of the team that put together the ADOS2 test, which is the gold standard for diagnosing autism. Dr. Spenlove, do you believe that autism is completely the mother's fault? So on our channel, we've got some very interesting comments. I'm going to read the comment verbatim, and I would like to hear your professional opinion on these comments. Your three older children are lovely, friendly young people. The girl is a delight. She really is. She's adorable, my little Marie. That's why I started writing to you, as somewhere lost, there is your ability to do good parenting. So apparently, according to her, I had good parenting with my three older kids because they are not autistic. And then something shook you and things went different with Ezra. Autism is 99%, save angel man syndrome, etc., is the state of the mother of the diagnosed kid. Basically, you are not the very typical autism mother. Typical ones break down all their kids' development. You did a brilliant job did not give your kids excessive attention. I think she's referring to the three older ones. Yeah. And then something occurred. You searched for what it was, I don't know. Maybe depression, maybe you found pleasure in full-time motherhood, heaven forbid, <laughs> with ideas. Maybe you were in conflict with your parents, something. But now, if you keep your current principles, each subsequent child will be autistic, and Simon's mild autism will turn into severe. To you, all your kids are equally important. In my experience, I found that autism is treatable in the mother. If you get a mother on your side, autism in her child disappears. Mothers create this. I just want to leave it at that because okay. I just would love to hear your professional opinion on that. Okay, let's address the, the mother issue. Yeah. In 1940, which you can calculate how long that ago that was. It was 83 years ago. In 1940, a psychiatrist who first started noticing this difficulty with socializing, communicating, unusual behaviors, first started calling it autism. <clears throat> he was a psychoanalytic psychiatrist. Psychoanalysis comes from Sigmund Freud. 
and it has a lot to do with these ideas that are unknowable, the unconscious, the subconscious, right? The ego, the superego, things like that. Or in that theoretical perspective, it's about relationships that cause psychiatric difficulties. And so this person in 1940 said, it's got to be the mothers. And they're cold, they're unloving, they don't pay attention. And the theory was titled, Refrigerator Mothers. And it was the, it was the looming accepted theory of autism from 1940 through about the 70s. There was other work being done by other researchers who started to fight against that because even mothers who were excellent at child rearing had all the skills that they needed, still had kids with autism. And it was debunked a long time ago in the 70s. Um, and it's not something that the mainstream clinical psychology, clinical neuropsychology, none of us have, have ever researched that since because it's just not true. It's a neurodevelopmental disorder. It's not about mothers uh, being cold. Uh, you can find lots of information on the internet about this theory of refrigerator mothers. Um, PVS, for example, did an excellent uh, documentary on the harm it caused families uh, because when mothers were blamed for it, mothers were more suicidal, they were depressed, there was a, a difficulty with them feeling motivated to try with their child. And that's really the detriment. Uh, laying blame on one person in the family system always leads to more difficulties in that family. And so refrigerator mothers is false. It's absolutely unsupported in actual, legitimate, empirical research. Uh, we know that autism is something that a child is born with. Something happens in the second trimester. And that's where the genetic coding and things occur that later will, will present as autism. It's not anything to do with the environment. Now what the environment does have to do with autism is how, how much they will improve or not improve. Certainly, a parent who is, is cold and ignoring a child of any kind, autism or not, will have a child with problems. But that's an environmental thing that, that can sway the severity of a child. But a child's innate ability to understand social cues, to speak, to interact, that is something that it has nothing to do with child rearing. It has to do with the brain. And so refrigerator mothers is false. And, and the individuals who want to continue to support that theory have not done any current research uh, because certainly in the last 40 years of, of doing research on autism, nobody has supported the refrigerator mother ideal. It's gone. It's, in, in our mind, it's, it's been debunked. It's been laid to rest. It is dead. Um, so why somebody in 2023 would bring it up again as, and purport it as a... Uh, for sure theory uh, is sort of evidence of their lack of understanding, uh, evidence of their lack of expertise, uh, and certainly not involved in current events with, with, with regard to autism. Thank you. Yeah. And I can definitely see the harm that that would cause on the mother because there she is putting everything into her child. Yeah. Yeah. Mothers pour their heart and soul into children. And if, if somebody wants to blame them for a difficulty, it is an absolute affront of everything sacred to the mother. And then another comment that she said, if you knew better, your child would never need therapy like mine never did. They had a mom who knew what to do. So she's implying that. And she's, this is you know her response to our channel. So it's definitely directly at me. Like, I don't know what to do. So therefore, I don't have perfect children like her. So let's talk about children in general, okay? okay? There is no such thing as the perfect child. Every child has a problem of some kind or another, and every problem can rise to the level of clinical severity, meaning they need professional intervention. Most childhood difficulties can be managed with parenting, okay? Um, but even the child who is doing well, doing well in school, not disobeying teachers, even they will have an angry day. Even they will try to get what they want through manipulative strategy and disobey a mother or a father. There are lots of very, very good children 
who are obedient and they do their homework and they go to bed on time and they eat everything on their plate and they do all these great things, even those children have their difficulties of some kind or another. And so to, to purport that a, a child should never need therapy because the, if the mothering is good is again an affront to the idea of humanity because very good mothers have children who need therapy because children bring their own experiences and proclivities and predispositions. Uh, our children are, are often supposedly mini-me's and the truth is they are not. They come with their own personalities. You can see the similarities, and the similarities is what, what is exciting. But truthfully, they're not you. You right? always expect them to be, right? Well, sure. But you always but expect, like, I like baseball, so all of my kids are going to like baseball. Yeah, or exactly. Whatever. If a parent feels that their child should be perfect and just like them, that's actually more clinically uh, harmful than a child who is, quote-unquote, doing great but still a child. It's true, parents can... can have an influence on how well their children do things but the best parents in the world are still going to have kids who will need therapy every now and then so it's ludicrous to say perfect child or a mother who does their job correctly will never have a child in therapy those are all false concepts i feel like that um if you want to take that logic like oh if i do my job right my child will never have autism i mean that's like saying if i have good parenting my child will never have a heart defect yeah. Or never have cancer. Yeah, or like my dad was a dentist, right? Mm-hmm. So his children should never have cavities. Yeah, they shouldn't. Well, I have a ton of them. <laughs> he must be the worst dentist in the world, right? No, that, that's, not the, that's not the test of success in career or success in role. My dad's a doctor. I never got sick. <laughs> <laughs> we used to live in an RV, and we traveled to all the national parks in the U.S. In the RV, we learned a lot, and we post daily of our unique normal. Please consider subscribing. Join us next week when we discuss another comment from this commentator. It's going to be fun. And our autism playlist is here.